So hello everybody, as I promised you in my last video about the black box from 1010 Music as well as the Tangerine, I will support it with Convert with Moss and here it is, Convert with Moss 7.4 supports now the 1010 Music format, the source as well as a destination format. And it's not only the two devices I showed you, I got also told that the Bitbox series, so the three Bitbox versions which are available for Eurorack from 1010 Music, also use the same format, but I think they have a limitation for the sample numbers, so check the manual with that. Nevertheless, it will work nicely and if you have more samples, it will just it will be truncated to the supported number. But I also get told that they want to look into that so they could be on the same level as all their other devices. Another thing to mention is that in the current firmware version of the black box, it does not load the loop points for all the samples in the multi-sample only for one setting, but this changed in the version 3015, which is currently in beta. And I also get a later version, which also fixes that for loading samples from a directory, which we will also have a look in a second. So this will be available soon in a final version. So, but having to look into the 1010 music format, which is quite interesting in a way that it stores most of the information, not in a separate document, but directly in the WAV files. So I also improved a lot what you can do with pure WAV files as a source as well as a destination. For the source also the instrument chunk is now analyzed. So the instrument chunk contains information about the range of the keys of one sample as well as the velocity range. So these are simply the basic building blocks you need to create a multi-sample and then these things will be applied if nothing meaningful could be found in an instrument chunk. Similar now if you write WAV files, so for example if you choose the source of a proper format, for example the Archive MPC or let's say contact format, which have proper settings for velocity as well as key ranges, you can now store them in your WAV files. So it will update your WAV files and you can say write this instrument chunk which has the information of fine tuning as well as gain information, the note range I mentioned and velocity range. And as well you can select to write the sample chunk which also contains basically the same information about the root note as well as pitch information but also the looping of that sample. But I also added another one, which is the broadcast audio extension chunk, which is used already in lots of samples to store some information about the originator who created these files, as well as date and time of the creation. And you can now also choose to write this information into your WAV files. For example, if you convert a contact file, which has these kind of information, this can be also now directly stored into the WAV files. And there is some option to remove some, yeah, not necessary information, which are just there for aligning data on certain blocks. And also MD5, which is a checksum, should be removed if you change things here, because I'm not sure how to update this and I did not find any specification about this, which data is used to calculate this checksum. So it's more safe to keep this option on and just to remove these things. Also, the broadcast audio metadata is also analyzed if you choose this as a source. So if there is metadata information in that and you, for example, choose to create contact or decent sampler or whatever, this information will then also be safely transferred into the new file format. So which means now basically you can now create full-blown multi-samples by only using WAV files. And this is also important now to 1010 Music because if you want to load a multi-sample to an existing preset, you absolutely need to have that information directly into the WAV files because currently 1010 Music Blackboss cannot combine several presets. So if you want to bring in a second multi-sample, 
this is absolutely essential that you did store that information into the WAV files. And you see here, these options are the same as I showed you with the WAV format, and these should simply be kept on, but I gave you the choice. If you for any reason do not want to store that information, if you don't want to have be tinkered with your files, you can simply switch them off all, and then you will have the original source files you put into. Uh, by the way, there's also some changes for formats who use zip files, for example, like Bitwig. Bitwig creates this kind of multi-sample extension, which is actually simply a compressed zip file. And now the files in the zip file will get the time and date settings of the original source files. But finally, let's have a look at the 1010 music format. There's another option. There is this quality settings if you go into the information and choose configuration. So there is a quality setting which improves the interpolation between the samples in the ranges, but it needs a bit more of a CPU power. So you have the option here to choose the high quality setting or the normal setting in the creation process. So let's finally do a conversion. For example, let's choose here some contact files of mine. Let's say we want to create some of my pad sounds, which the main ones are from my good old O1W, which I really still love a lot. And let's say, yeah, let's create them. And we simply click on convert and the process starts with the conversion. So we don't need all, we can simply cancel that. And then you see here, you have this output format. It contains the WAV files with a preset. So um, if you look at the SD card of the black box or also the tangerine, it has this structure that there is a preset folder and all the preset files need to be in that preset folder with the name of the actual preset. So we have to have in the preset a folder name uh, which has the name of the preset and, and there you have always this preset XML. And normally the WAV files are totally somewhere else on the card which is hard for me to recreate because it can be anywhere. So I simply choose to put it in there. So if you simply copy the folder into the presets folder, everything will be fine and the samples will be found. But if you for any reason want to put them somewhere else, you simply need to update the path in the files. So here you see the wave halves and there you would need to put a more relative path, which goes, for example, out of that preset folder to a different folder. I'm not sure why you want to do that, but just for your information, if you have any use case for that, you know where to change this. I copied already the files to the card and let's simply go here to preset. And here I copied two of the converted files. For example, let's load here this atmosphere sound. Come on. And then you can play it. You also notice it has a proper setting of the envelope. So also envelope and filter settings will be converted if there is something in the source file. But even if there is no proper setting for the envelope, it guesses from the name, the category, for example, Atmos would also be guessed as a pad sound and then a pad envelope with a longer release will be a guest and also automatically applied. Also filter settings for low pass and high pass will be converted if there is such information which is rare in the source file. I already mentioned here you have one multi-sample in the preset, but how can you proceed if you need more multi-samples in the preset? There is no load option. The only thing you can do is to choose an empty path, then go to info and then say load. And then you go to a folder which contains a multi-sample, which is here in our case, the presets folder. And then we go to aftermath, which is a second pad I converted. And if you go in there, you see all the samples. And then you simply say file and load all. And it will now reconstruct also the multi-sample settings from the WAV files, as I explained earlier. So let's check that out, but let's maybe change here the MIDI settings. So also the MIDI settings will be, uh, if, you, if you load a converted preset, it will be set to MIDI in to MIDI channel one. But if we did this now, it will be off. So let's also set that 
to MIDI channel one and let's say this is gate and then let's go back to the main view and switch it off for that one just for the second so let's switch MIDI off for that so we hear only the other sound we also need to adjust that it's not playing only monophonic wrong one here we are so we need to set this to poly so here we go now it's also working nicely and now we can also layer the two if you set them to the same midi channel so let's go back to the first one and let's also go here to the midi channel set it back to one and now let's play it So you can create really powerful pads by layering techniques here, as I showed you. So, but what you can do as well is to use the 1010 music as a source format, which makes sense because this one has a really nice auto sampler in there. So if you sampled any of your devices and want to use this multi sample in, for example, in wherever, in Bitwig, for example, with the Bitwig sampler, you can totally do that. So simply select as well here again your source files. And I have here also some test files for the 1010 music sounds presets. If you use a source file which has a multi sample or more, if you have, for example, if I would save that two multi samples, these two multi samples will be transferred into separate presets of your destination format. But if you, for example, have something like here, the 808 kit, and there is no multi-sample in there, so only single samples in the 16 slots, it will aggregate these 16 slots into one output file. So let's check that out with this 808 kit here. So you see there is one output created now, an 808 kit. I have Bitwig somewhere here as well. So let's try to load that. So, and here you see it did aggregate nicely the different drum sounds into one preset. You cannot hear that now because I have a different setup, but this would play then here as well, the 16 slots into such a preset. Also, just to mention, again, if you go on a GitHub site, you can get this documentation Excel sheet where I note for the different formats from where the information is read or written, what are the parameter names. And as you see, I also added now for the WAF files, this broadcast extension information, which can now read these chunk data as well. This is also used, by the way, in other formats, as of set, for example. And you can check that here. Also, Decent Sampler, I can read and write that information. And at the end, you will also find the details about the 1010 music format, what is supported, and what parameters are missing in that format. Okay, so much for the new Convert More 7.4. I hope you like it, dig it, and until next time, make some funky music.